What's good? What's good? Surprise live. What's going on? What's good? We're going to talk. We're going to talk. I got some good news. But we're going to let it fill up a little bit. I got some good news. We're going to talk tonight. We're going to talk tonight. Let me let it. Let it let let it at least fill up at least at least two three people so I ain't talking to myself. Let me, let's let's do that. You know, a little impromptu live. You know, at least two or three people so I ain't talking to myself. You know. So I'll let it fill up. But I am happy. I am happy. I'm feeling feeling good. It's you know saying some good news tonight. Nothing nothing bad at least from my end. Some good news tonight. I'm saying, let's see who's in here. Hand me some water out of my expensive Starbucks cup. Kelvin Hicks, what's going on with you? You know what I'm saying? It's just us, Kelvin. We talking to ourselves right now. <laughs> Sergeant Thomas, what's good with the cues? What's good, dog? Cynthia Casilius? Hi, Ron. What's going on? Louis, Louis Rivera, what's good? Eddie Russell, what's going on? Chris Davis, OT Josh. What's good? Y'all hit the like button as y'all come in. Hit the like button as y'all come in. We're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit. OT Josh, Dwayne Johnson, Pastor Oliver. What's good? Sadiqa Charles. How you doing, Sadiqa? What's going on? Now I'm saying I'm, I'm the um I'm the opening act for the final word. I'm the opening act. You know what I'm saying? But I got some good news for y'all. We're going to talk. Got my brother DMV shirt on. You see Trayvon Diggs. You see Micah Parsons. You know what I'm saying? Got my brother DMV shirt on. You know what I'm saying? Y'all check out his shop if I go get go get one of them shirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that name is funny, man. Shut up. Ron, what it do, my guy? What's good with you? What's good with you? Y'all hit that like button as y'all come in. We're gonna talk about Trayvon Diggs and the players finally standing for them, standing up for themselves, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can um y'all can hear me loud and clear, see me loud and clear, everything look good. Athena Kiss was good. I am good. How about yourself? How about yourself? How are you? How are you? Give out some mods tonight. I couldn't give out mods the other day because um I didn't have um when I when I jumped in the, the restream. I'm still figuring out how to see the likes and add mods and stuff. Some of them joints you can't do it. So we went back to home team. We went back to the normal stream. You know what I'm saying? As I work on my stuff. Um, Lord Nova, what's going on? What's going on? Sadiqa Charles, we didn't discuss this. I give out mods to my people. So we got this. We got this fully under control. It's my fourth year doing YouTube. I, I got it under control. I got I got my finger on the pulse. If it get too crazy, I take everybody mods away. <laughs> but I appreciate you because Miss Charles don't play that. Um, y'all heard the story about Diggs, or do y'all need me to enlighten y'all? Because I just got enlightened myself. Which is why I said I'm going live. Talked to my brother Boss Cowboy earlier. Talked to my brother Jay Tuck earlier, and I find it very interesting. But before we get started, I just want to know: Are y'all familiar with why I'm jumping in here? Excited about what Dig said, or no? Yes or no? Josie Gutierrez, how are you? Hope I said your name right. Hope I said your name right. Nope, you missed it. Okay, well I'm gonna give you a little preamble. I'm going to just give you what I heard, you know what I'm saying? But I did get briefed and talked to by boss. I got briefed and talked to by my brother, Jay Tuck. So I know what's going on. So I'm not going to run the interview. I'll be able to, you'll be able to check the interview out a little bit later on my brother's show. But long story short, 103.5, the fan, um, I think his name Sean Sharif, Sean Sharif, whatever his name is. You know, they got their show. They, they, they the flagship station of the Cowboys. And earlier this week, you know, it's been you've heard the story about Micah Parsons and the uh, anonymous reports. I've heard that. Right. Sam Sharif. Sharif. OK. I said his name wrong. My fault. You know, what I'm saying? no disrespect to him. I don't know him personally. Um, Y'all heard the, the story that came on Friday about Micah and the, it's 80 people in here, man. Y'all hit that like button for me. Y'all hit that like button for me if you can. Um, let's get it to 100 likes. That lets everybody know I'm I'm, I'm live. <laughs> uh, Danny Savage said a bunch of clowns. Hey, look, I don't got no personal vendetta for some dudes because we do, do do different things. They 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 radio host on a, a nationally or a locally syndicated radio station. I'm a YouTube content creator. We 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 different people. 
we do two different things. You know what I'm saying? But what they do have is access to the players. They have access to the owners. They get um they, they can go on the star. They they have access that I don't have personally. But I do got some ears to the streets. Always know that. I got some ears to the streets. Doing this for a while, I have gained some people that know in, are in the know. Let's just say that. I like my Starbucks cup. I think it's lit. Um, and there was the anonymous report of things are wearing thin. I'm pretty sure um, things are wearing thin with Micah Parsons with people that work for the Cowboys. Anonymous reports. And, you know, when it happened on the date, let me pull a date up just in case so we can make sure we're on the same page. When it happened, Trayvon Diggs, um, April 5th, 8.07 p.m., his first tweet was, who said it? Who said it? Right? And y'all y'all hit that like button for me. It's 112 people in here. Um, I'll read your super chat in one moment, young boy, J.D. Let me get my point off. Um, but I see it. Thank you for the super chat. Just give me one second. Um, he said, who said it? So, of course, this same ripples through the through the Cowboys fan base. Everyone gets upset. Um, I get upset because I'm tired. I, I make the video saying, you know, why is it always our players, our star players, players that bring the most value to the team? Why, when it's time for them to get paid, they always got to get torn down? Paul was good. Was good. Was good. Like every time one of our players is about to get paid, Des Bryant, Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, now starting to have CD Lamb, Micah Parsons, um, people before that. Whenever it's time to get paid, stories start to come out, and it's crazy to me, right? Well, that story starting to make national headways. Y'all seen it the last couple of days. You've seen it on ESPN, on FS1. You've seen it on the late night thing with Shannon Sharp and them. It's starting to make its way around. You know what I'm saying? I know it ain't 120 people in here and I only got 55 likes. I'm, y'all just messing with me. I know 40 people ain't slide in here and just refuse to hit the like button. Y'all, look, look. As I always say, that's like walking in somebody's house, not taking your shoes off, walking through the living room, walking right past them, walking into the kitchen and starting to make something to eat and not acknowledging them. That's the least you can do is just hit the, yeah, no home training. Just walked in, start making a sandwich. Didn't even say nothing to me. Got the chips out. Like, come on, y'all. <laughs> don't, don't do me like that. At least be like, yo, what up? Before you make a sandwich. Um, Nah. So, you know, it seems like every time any of our players start to get any type of notoriety, any type of, um, you know, financial, let's just say they play so well, become an all pro, pro bowler, et cetera. When it's time to get paid, it's like, ah, let's kind of tear them back down to bring that price back down. You know how I go. So the anonymous reports come out about Micah. Diggs comes out and says, who said it? But there's more. And I hope I ain't being too long with it, but I'm trying to give you all the backstory. So the weekend goes by. Apparently, I think it's Monday or no, nah, it's Monday. I think it's yesterday. Sean Sharif, if I'm saying his name right, goes on the fan and says, Trayvon Diggs DM'd him. DM'd him. Now, I didn't get the exact tweet or the exact DM. I don't know if he put that out of there and nothing like that. But basically DM'd him saying, yo, who said it? So he didn't just tweet who said it. He went after, yo, who said it? Trey Manning was good. Was good. Lola Cowboys was good. Was good. Was good. That is different. That stands out to me. That's the first good news I've got all off season. First of all, it shows leadership. That's first. That's a big deal. Because we've been getting pummeled in the media. Can we agree with that? Almost to 100 likes too. 86 likes. 143 people in here watching. Appreciate y'all. Can we agree with that? We've been getting punished in the media. Literally the day on ESPN I hear Cowboys are having the worst offseason in franchise history, I think. 
they definitely said we're having the worst offseason than any team in the NFL. And you know what's crazy? Sometimes you can get mad, but literally, I can't even disagree with them. Like, I can't even say, yo, nah, y'all wrong. Because they not. We are probably having the worst offseason any team in the NFL. We have 100% spent the least money. 150 people in here, man. Please hit that like button for me. We have spent the least money in the entire NFL. That's crazy to me. Not even trying. We've multiple players have walked. We haven't re-signed anybody. Y'all know how bad it's been. Every other day it's a story about this, story about that. That got a lawsuit. Jerry got a lawsuit. Like it's been a bad off season. But to have one of our leaders, I'm about to get that that super chat, young boy JD. I did not forget about you. To have one of our leaders finally step out there and G check somebody at the radio station and say, yo, man, who is talking? I'm tired of it. I'm not playing no more. It's up. Who talking? Who talking about my teammates? I like that. That's drawing a line in the sand. If the front office is not going to believe in us, if the media going to hate on us, we all we got. We are all we got. You feel me? Let me read this super chat real quick. Appreciate you, young boy, JD. 999 super chat. What is good, Rome? How <laughs> um, how you been, man? And yes, I heard about the Micah thing. The guys who made the assumptions on their radio station trying to start with people. And bro, I still rock it with you, man. Love you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for that super chat. I really, really do. I'm sorry that you had to wait. I just wanted to get that point out, but I appreciate you. Paul with the $10 super chat. Appreciate you, Paul, um, for the $10 super chat. Been watching your channel since 2021 season, and this is by far the most frustrating season, but still going to be a Cowboys fan. Keep up the good work, bro. Thank you. I appreciate your support for rocking with me for mad years. Um, thank you for dropping that super chat. And look, man, I'm going to come out here and support the team and support y'all and give y'all the best content I can. Um, literally have Eagles content creators that I know. I've got other content creators that I'm cool with that literally have been saying, y'all don't even know how you're making content. Y'all not doing nothing. And I feel like it's a blessing that I have the skill and the wherewithal to know how to create content that's at least interesting and, and enjoyable in a time like this where there's nothing going on. All we got is mock drafts and hope. It's unfortunate, but that's where our ownership, our leadership, our front office have left us with nothing but hope and hypotheticals. Now, I'm one of the most optimistic cop Cowboys fans you're going to run into. So I can do a lot with hope and hypotheticals. But it's frustrating when your front office doesn't want to do anything for you. We almost got 200 people in here and 105 likes. Let's get it to 150. Last 30 people. I've seen y'all sneaking in the back door. I seen you. Don't be having from our fridge without hitting the like button. You know what I'm saying? Say what's up. I rock. What's good? Chris Davis, what's going on? People sneaking in here. What's going on? Elijah Robinson. You know what I'm saying? Just making sure I make sure I speak to people that coming in the chat. Brandon Comey, what's good? What's good? What's good? My peoples is in here. But like I said, with all the turmoil, the first positive news I've heard this offseason. Trayvon Diggs coming out saying, you know what? Who said it? But asking the radio station host. Now, I'm sure he ain't say who said it. I'm sure he he probably copped a plea. I ain't heard the exact clip. I ain't need to hear it. I heard enough just hearing that he checked him. I don't care how it came off or nothing. Trayvon Diggs is becoming a leader. 25-year-old, all-pro cornerback. Trayvon Diggs is becoming a leader, a vocal leader, a step up when my brother needs my help leader. Uh, I stand with Micah Parsons. I stand with C.D. Lamb. I stand with Micah Parsons type leader. That's a big deal. That's the core of our team. Five most, impl five most important players on the Cowboys right now. Y'all go. Y'all let me know. Five most important players on the Cowboys. I can run them down to you. Easy. Dak. Micah, Diggs, Lamb, Tyler Smith. 
Of course, Shan is going to say who, who it was. I don't care if Sean Sharif says who it was, though, Sadiqa, to be quite frank. Alicia D was good. Like, I don't need Sean Sharif to speak or say anything. I don't need confirmation from him on who said it. The bad thing is that someone's talking about our players in a negative light. That's the thing. And the, the flagship radio station is excited to report it. Now, I know they're reporters. They're supposed to be non-biased and non-partial, and we're just reporting the news, and I get it. But sometimes it seems like they take so much joy in reporting negativity that it's hard not to think that they don't co-sign it. Now, y'all tell me I'm wrong on that one. OT Josh with the file out Super Chat. Coming in um, without hitting the like button is like, bruh, man, walking in Martin Crib. It's just like, bruh, man, walking in Martin Crib, making a sandwich. Making a sandwich. And if y'all too old for the Martin reference, go on, get, get on YouTube. Hit the like button. Thank you, OT Josh. Thank you for that five dollar super chat. Y'all, y'all, y'all listen to OT Josh. Take a moment. Don't be like bruh man from Martin. If you're not familiar, get familiar. Hit the like button. Sean Nesbeth with the five dollar super chat. Appreciate you. Salute, Rome. We here for your positivity, big bro. Seems <laughs> the only place we can get it. Hey, look, but Sean, can you agree with this? I'm gonna be positive, but I'm gonna be real. So there are times when I'm not going to be just fake positive for you. I got to give you the real. You got to agree with me on that. I'm not here to just fake stuff. I'm here to give you the real. Jackie Smith, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> CFTA came wrong. Appreciate you. Bro, man, from the fifth flow. You already know from the fifth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not supposed to just give y'all all, 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 all rainbows and gumdrops and all the happy. I got to give y'all some real. And lately, the reality is our front office hasn't been caring about what we're doing. The front office got the fan base so twisted. We don't know if we're doing the tank job. We don't know if we're rebuilding. We don't know if we're reloading. We, all I know for sure is that we ain't spending no money. So to have one of our leaders... Like I said, when our top five players on our team step out there and defend his teammates, it's a big deal. It's a big positive deal. It lets me know that, you know what it lets me know? First of all, do y'all think that's positive? Do y'all think that Trayvon Diggs stepping up and defending and, and, and DMing, DMing the dude from the radio station trying to find out who said it? So they can get to it. Do y'all think that's a positive thing? Yes or no? Yeah, the front off the front office is exhaust, exhausting. Cali Cowboy, front office is draining. That's a fact. Front office is draining. That is a fact. It's good to finally hear. Look, look. Of course, I would love for um, we almost to 200 likes too, man. Uh, two, well, actually, we almost to 200 people. We had 150 likes. Y'all hit that like button. With all the negativity, the players is like, look, we all we got, we're gonna stand with each other. So whatever happens in the draft, whatever low budget free agents they go sign, whatever undrafted free agents they add to this team. The players seem like they're going to just lock in and they're going to do what they got to do. They're not out here begging for help. They're not out here hanging their head. That's why when I'm seeing Brandon Cooks out here training with Jalen Tobert, I'm like, all right. I see Deron Bland putting in work. I see um, Jordan Lewis putting in work. I hear about the throwing sessions with, 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 with um, Brandon Cooks and, and Dak Prescott. Micah Parsons out here putting in work. I've seen the players working. I haven't made the same usual videos I do where I do like, hey, man, you see the players putting in work. Why y'all think that is? Why y'all think I ain't put up the workout videos and make the videos that I normally do? Saying that this player is putting in work and that player is putting in work. Why do y'all think I haven't done that this offseason? Let me just ask y'all. Since we, this is a conversation. We a family. Let's, let's talk. Why do y'all think I've tried to fill back off that? At least for now. Sam Williams putting in work. That's right, Lord Nova, because if I put up one person running one sprint, it don't mean nothing. They ain't going to win nothing in the playoffs. I, I put up one video of Dak Prescott completing the pass. Complete a pass in the playoffs. 
That's where we at as a fan base. We're so negative. Green Bay knocked us out cold. San Francisco been working us out for the last couple of years, mentally breaking us. And then when we got to Green Bay, when Green Bay came to our house and beat us, it broke us. Ada Lockhart was good. It broke us. It broke the fan base. That loss was so bad, it broke the fan base. It broke our ownership group. Now our owners are afraid to spend money. They don't know if they like the quarterback no more. They don't want to pay. How you don't want to pay Micah? Jackie Smith, you're right. Rome, the fan base is still mad about the Packers game. 100% mad, sad. It's, 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 it's depressing. It's depressing. That loss was so bad that Jerry Jones don't know if he believe in Micah Parsons no more. What? The generational pass rusher? You out here talking about, well, maybe I can get five CD lambs. What? No, I can get five players for what I would pay CD lamb. My fault. Let me let me clear that up. Jerry, Jerry at the owners meetings. Are you crazy, Jerry Jones? C.D. Lamb is the best receiver in the NFL right now to me. He's slightly behind Tyreek um, in yardage, and that's it. Touchdowns, catch percentage, actual catches, C.D. Lamb's the best receiver in the NFL. The same C.D. Lamb I used to argue with Cowboys fans about, about being the number one. Y'all remember that? How many of y'all was around when I used to have to come on here and argue with people about if C.D. Lamb's the number one? How many of y'all remember that? Now I'm testing, seeing who's been around. We almost to 200 likes. We right there. Like, I used to have straight beef. Yo, CeeDee Lamb ain't no number one. We need to go get another receiver. Are you serious? Are you serious? Now, even with me saying I thought CeeDee Lamb, CD Lamb was a bona fide number one, even I didn't see best best receiver in the NFL, but here we are. Statistically, my dog got busy last year, and I don't think he hit his peak yet. CeeDee Lamb just operating off pure talent. He got levels to hit. He going to play better. And he out there without a true Robin. No disrespect to um Brandon Cooks. You give CeeDee Lamb a true Robin to his Batman, and it's going to go crazy. Well, you can't just double him. They don't give enough, enough attention to Brandon Cooks for CeeDee Lamb really to be cooking like he should be. But we will get another weapon. Y'all mark my words. Somebody's going to fill in that, that number two spot, but that's another show for another day. Chuck Montana, what's good? Troy Dudley, what's going on? I see people sneaking here. Dean Lee's life, was good? Let's be real. We got Stockholm Syndrome. We do. Jerry is the reason we only take talk about Super Bowl. I don't just talk about Super Bowls, but I see what you're saying. The stigma is Cowboys fans just talk about Super Bowls, but really care about beating the Eagles and making the playoffs. I don't really necessarily, let me clear that up. I don't necessarily care about beating the Eagles. Eagles fans just loud and annoying, and you got to respond to them because they talk to you. Like, Eagles fans are the type of dudes that will say, they'll talk about the Cowboys all day, and then when you respond, they'll say, yo, you, all you care about is the Eagles. But when you move on, like I've been spending 95 to 99% of my offseason talking Cowboys and how I'm mad at the front office. And every time I remotely say anything that can be hinted at winning a game, here come an Eagles fan trying to argue with me and bait me into an argument. The thing that bugs me out is I'm like, yo, I don't need to talk about y'all to do my content. Cowboys fans, hey, I can ask y'all why y'all here. And let's get it to 200 likes because we got 218 people in here. It's 15 people ain't hit the like button. We could be at 200 right now. They talk too much. That's a fact. They do. And I'm going to move back on to my comment, commentary about our players in a second. We can do a little bit of poll. Raise your hand if you hear. <laughs> no, not, no. Yes or no. Are you here to hear me talk about the Eagles? Is that what you're here for? Because I'm almost 100% positive that's not why y'all here. Y'all enjoy the jokes, but y'all not here for that. Love's beauty. <laughs> Hello there, Roman chat. Please hit that like button. That's a fact. Ain't none of y'all here for that. Y'all don't care if I'm arguing with their content creators. Y'all don't care if I'm downplay. I don't need to downplay Jalen Hurts. For what? Dude got one good season out of four. It ain't, it ain't really worth talking about. 
Last year looked like a good season. Then it fell off a cliff. Lost six or seven games. Your quarterback back, Prescott, ain't never lost six or seven games in his career. Got blown out by Baker Mayfield. Fumbled away that playoff game and fumbled away the Super Bowl. Like, I can make jokes about him all day. Got one of the best offensive lines in NFL. Got two number one receivers. Got a great tight end. Had a good running back. All this weaponry, and you can't throw 30 touchdowns? Like, come on, man. The jokes write themselves, but why? Why spend that much time talking about them? For what? As you can see in the chat, all of y'all saying no, no, no. Y'all not here for that. Sean Nesbeth with the 199, no 199 Super Chat. F them Eagles with the ugly green. That's a fact. Now, back to my team, back to my players, back to the fact that as bad as this offseason's been, a lot of the players have been quiet. Micah Parsons ain't been doing this podcast. Although that Micah Lamb is Micah, Micah Lamb, Micah Parsons, a CD Lamb episode of Micah's podcast was incredible. It's a great listen. Go back and listen to it. Y'all know Dak Prescott not going to do a whole lot of talking in the offseason. He's going to do his little charitable events, and he's going to put his work in. He's going to come back next year. So C.D. Lamb not talking. Micah not doing his podcast. We He almost was guaranteed to talk, right? Almost at 200 likes, 198. Mike McCarthy did an interview with NFL Live. That's pretty much it. But he looked like he was just echoing what the front office is saying. Every time Jerry Jones opened his mouth, I want to run my head through a sheetrock wall. Stephen Jones makes me want to jump off a building, go play in traffic. Like, that's how this offseason has been. But to see my boy, Trayvon Diggs, check the media. Now, they're going to downplay it. They're going to act like, you know. If, if, if I'm sure if I had the dude from the fan in front of me, he would downplay it. He would downplay us like he always do with content creators. You know, we're a big joke. We're just fans of the team. and No one really cares what we're talking about. But in the same breath, you'll acknowledge our existence because you can't ignore us. Our voices are too loud. You might can ignore CFT, but you can't ignore Law. You can't ignore Vach. You can't ignore Mark Holmes. These is 100K um, subscriber channels. They got more subs than the fan. They do more numbers than the fan. You can't ignore these people. You can't ignore Foots or Okoye or Skywalker Steel or Jay Tuck or DMV. You can't. So what you going to do? Downplay us? Act like we just, we just hyped up fans. But when a player check you, When a player check you, you play it light. You act like it's not that big a deal. All right. All right. See, I might not be able to get to you. Trayvon Diggs can. Who said it? That was a stamp. That was that was Diggs saying, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of every time I turn on the radio in Dallas, every time I hear something, it's negative. And y'all hide behind that convenient. Anonymous people at the building are getting worn thin. How y'all feel about that worn thin? Because I think it's the most idiotic worn thin. Michael Jordan punched a teammate dead in the face. I bet you no GM, not a person that worked for the Bulls, cared at all. Punched him dead in the face. You want to know their response to that? Your fist shouldn't have been in Michael's fi- uh, your face shouldn't have been in the way of Michael's fist. I'm sorry. I'm in the business of winning. I got one of the best players in the world on my team. I don't care who said it. I don't care if it was Jerry, Steven, and Charlotte Jones in a circle holding hands saying they don't like Micah Parsons. Y'all ain't won us a game. Y'all can't make a sack, throw a pass, run for a touch. Y'all can't do nothing. Shut up. You barely own the team properly. And you got the nerve to slander and denigrate one of our better players? Shut up. What, because he got a podcast? 
because he speak his mind, because he don't want to be quiet and just shuck and jive and look whatever y'all want. That's why you don't like Micah? You want to hear something real crazy, though? 220 people in here, 212 likes. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> First of all, I don't even know that story. Irvin stabbed one in the neck is a wild story. I, ain't, I don't even know what that is. Cartel got him, Dean Lee. I appreciate you. All I'm saying is this, man. All I'm saying is this. Every man, every fan, and every team got a breaking point. They got a breaking point. We got a breaking point. And you know what's funny? Trayvon Diggs is quiet. He's not even a boisterous person. Trayvon Diggs is quiet. He not like Stefan Diggs. He quiet. He keep it light. Jesse Harvey was good. To see Diggs DMing people, that lets me know that this team, y'all, do y'all, would y'all agree with me? This team is at a boiling point. We at a turning point. And I'm not saying that we're going, oh, we got a chip on our shoulder. We're going to win the Super Bowl before anybody try to say. That's not what I'm talking about. I'll tell you one thing, though. You about to see the most angry, pissed off Cowboys team you might have seen since the Super Bowl era. I don't know if that's going to equate to a championship, a deep playoff run, or wins or nothing. I know one thing. Every team we play gonna gonna have hell on their hands. Cause our players is pissed. Not only do we already get disrespected by everyone in the media and every fan on every other team, but now our own owners is disrespecting our players, not 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 supporting and showing them their worth. So not only do I got to take all that extra stuff, you don't even want to pay me? Somebody got to pay for it. Somebody got to pay for it. Now, let me ask y'all this, though. Let me ask y'all this. Let me, while, 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 I'm, while I'm talking, let me ask y'all this. Would y'all say that the Cowboys have, at bare minimum, four of the greatest players for Diggs, Lamb, Micah, Tyler Smith. 25 and under. And I'm not even adding Deron Bland, and I should. Four of the best players in the NFL at their position, 25 and under. Do we have that? Yes or no? Do the Cowboys have Micah Parsons, one of the best, if not the best pass rusher in the NFL? Yeah, I said it. At 25 and younger. No pass rusher at 25 and younger is better than him. CeeDee Lamb, I feel like it's the best receiver, 25 and younger. Y'all can argue with me all y'all want to. I don't care. And if he's not one of the best, he top three. Tyler Smith, one of the best young linemen in the NFL. All pro. Right? Trayvon Diggs, 25 years old the other day. And and, um, CeeDee Lamb just turned 25. Nah, nah, that was C.D. Lamb birthday, not Diggs. My fault. My point is, we got all these young players. Sidney Jones, two dollars super chat. Appreciate you. We go fifteen and two just to beat the commanders. <laughs> just beat the commanders. <laughs> Appreciate you for that two dollars super chat. We got all these young players. The reason why I'm bringing that up is this. Y'all hit that like button for me too. Let me take a drink. Hold on. And no, this ain't nothing crazy. It's just water. I ain't, I ain't doing nothing crazy. It's a weekday. I'm keeping it light. All these young players. So if we don't pay Micah Parsons, let's just say we trade Micah Parsons. This is all hypothetical. Okay? Hypothetical. This is That's my, my disclaimer for somebody to be like, Ron, what are you talking about? That's my disclaimer. All right? Check it out. We don't pay Micah Parsons. We trade him. We get two ones and another couple picks. We don't pay cd lamb we trade him we get another one and or maybe two ones so we're stocking up on picks we got four number ones right now right i'm not gonna use tyler smith because he ain't up for contract he's so young we good on that Dak prescott just walks 
because you're not going to be able to trade him. So we let Dak walk. This is the plan, apparently. Don't pay Micah. Don't pay CD. Trade him. Get four ones. Right? Okay. Let's just say F it. You trade Trayvon Diggs. Get one more one. You got five ones. That sound good to y'all? Does five one sound good to y'all? 232 likes. Appreciate y'all. 242 people. Dean Lee, nope. I'm going somewhere with it, Dean Lee. I'm just asking. I wanted to see what people think. People might want the five ones. We got five ones, right? Y'all get a pen and paper out. Five number one picks. I'm not going to do the where they at in the draft or nothing like that, right? But we don't have Micah no more. Generational pass rusher, he's gone. We've traded Diggs. We've traded CD. We got five ones on these additional picks. So we ready to build our team. Dak Prescott has walked. All we got is Tyler Smith. He's the only one left. The goal in rebuilding your team. See, you don't have a front office that likes free agents, so you're not getting none of those. So X that off. No free agents. All right? So whether we have money or not, that's been proven. You can go back and look. In 2017, 2018, 2019, when we had money to spend, they ain't want to spend it. And don't give me the Tony Romo on the books thing because that's been disproven. Go back and look at the money. Tony Romo wasn't on the books for three years. It, it wasn't. Just let it go. It wasn't. They post June 1st him after 2017. It's, it was a wrap. They just didn't want to spend no money. And don't tell me we was paying Zeke. That one running back contract was no. No. Dak Prescott's making like 1850. Anyway. So everybody gone. Number one picks don't always turn out. Oh, I already know. Great point. Great point, Sidney Jones. I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So we got five picks. All our players are gone. Say we draft all of these players with our five number one picks plus the regular ones we get. Right? So let's just say we draft for three years. We got three ones that we're going to normally get because we're going to get three number one picks. And then we got five additional ones. So that's eight number one picks in three years. Out of eight number one picks, how many all pros you think we're going to get? Out of eight players, we roll in the player lottery. How many all pros do you think we going to hit on? And you ask yourself, why? Why are you asking? CJ Kama with man zeros. <laughs> we, <laughs> with man zeros. I bring that up to say this. You want to let your players walk. 256 people in here, man. Last 20 people, please hit the like button for me. If you can, if you can. You want to let you want to let your players walk, right? You want to let your players walk in hopes of finding, let's just be generous, three more all pros. That are under 25 or 25 and younger. Not all pro later in the career like Dak, but your hope would be to hit on players and they become all pro at a young age. Does that sound like that makes sense? So you want to hit on players that you just drafted, and while they're young, you want them to show return on your investment, become an all pro before they hit 25 or at 25. Does that sound like a good investment? I'm just asking y'all. So if we draft these players with all these ones, right? We get them. We want them to be good and maybe become all pro good, pro bowl good within their first couple of years while they're still young. And then what would you do at that point? Would you pay them? Would you?
Khalil Lucero was good. Would you pay them? I'm just wondering. Because if your point is to go find young players that are all pro, pro, pro bowl caliber at cornerback, at pass rusher, at receiver, at quarterback, if the point in resetting everything is to go get those players so that you can pay them, that's the silliest shit I've ever heard because you already got that right now with Micah Parsons Trayvon Diggs, C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott. Why in the fuck would you go reset your entire team to try to get what you are looking at because you don't want to pay them? What kind of dumbass, idiotic thought process is that? I hope I can get a 25 and younger all-pro receiver. Oh, I already got one. I hope that I can get a 25 and younger all pro cornerback. I already got one. I got two. I hope I can go get a 25 and younger generational pass rusher. Oh, that's right. I already got one. I would love a veteran leadership, led the league in touchdowns, Great low interception percentage. Leader of men. All pro quarterback. Oh, yeah. I already got one. But forget all that. I want to reset the team and hope that the new players can turn into the shit I'm looking at. And y'all wonder... Why I haven't been positive all offseason? Because this is the dumbest thought process I've ever heard. It's stupid. We have multiple great players, an amazing young core, and I ain't even put Tyler Smith and Deron Bland in that. Wanye Thomas. We got amazing young players. Marquise Bell. Amazing young players. I ain't get to the veterans. D-Law, Zach Martin. A great young core. And to ball that up and throw it in the trash. Stargirl, what's good with you? It's crazy to me. And it's idiotic. And that's why I'm so frustrated most of the time. Because when I rack my mind and try to figure this out, it's like, okay. These are some of the most major positions in the NFL. We have young, pro bowl, all pro caliber people at those positions. And somehow you want to get rid of them. You don't see the value in, in Micah Parsons because of a podcast. There, there we go. There we go. They don't perform. They don't get the huge payday. They don't perform. Good. I got somebody. I got I got one. Jay and Jay and Slate. J- Jalen is a savage. I think it is. Jalen Savage. They don't perform. They don't get the payday. Who's performing? I love when somebody comes in here and says something like that. Last 20, 20, 25 people hit the let's hit the like button. Let's get the 300 likes. It don't even matter. I love when somebody comes in here and says that. They don't perform. Please tell me what performing looks like. Because if you say they don't get a job done and win a Super Bowl, then nobody except for the Chiefs should be getting paychecks. Please let me know. Because nobody with the, but the Chiefs should be getting paid. No, I ain't trying to hear it. I am not trying to hear it. Because when people come out here and say, well, Josh Allen deserve deserve a paycheck. Y'all think Josh Allen deserved to get paid? Why? Go ahead and say it so I can punch a hole in my computer screen. Tell me why Josh Allen deserved to get paid. Because his greatest accomplishment is losing to Patrick Mahomes on a big stage. So it can't be that. 
why Josh Allen deserve a check? Because he get good stats. It's the same thing you get mad at Dak Prescott about. Why? Because he can run it. Because he can run a couple extra touchdowns in. Because he ain't got no Super Bowl ring. So why did he deserve a check? All these other quarterbacks getting paid. Why Justin Herbert deserve to get a get a check? Because he can throw a football really far. Can't win no playoff games. Can't barely make the playoffs. Even Joe Burrow, and I like Joe Burrow a lot. I do. Joe Burrow, beast. But he ain't win the chip. He lost to Matthew Stafford, a quarterback that eerily resembles the one you have, a veteran quarterback that spent mad years not getting appreciated by his front office to go into another team and win the chip when they build around him properly. But y'all ain't trying to listen to me, though. AFC champions. Who was AFC champions? And what does that have to do with anything? Because Lamar Jackson, he a two-time MVP. What has he done that's so spectacular? Because that playoff win-loss record looked tritted to dash. Y'all let me know. Brandon Fife, my good. Y'all let me know. I'm just asking. Because all these people that, yo, they don't deserve to get paid because they don't perform in the biggest spots. Y'all let me know. Because Jalen Hurts got a big check. What he do last year in the playoffs? I saw him down 9-16. to 16. He fumbled in the end zone and lost the game, got blown out by Baker Mayfield. What's his excuse? Go ahead and tell me because A.J. Brown was hurt. Because when Tony Pollard broke his leg, nobody cared. When Dak Prescott had no running game and his second best receiver was Noah Brown, I ain't hear nothing. So I don't want to hear nothing about about A.J. Brown not playing in that playoff game. No, 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 no. He make 250-something million. Nah, you need to show me because you deserve your check, but my players don't deserve to get paid, and I ain't trying to hear that. I'm not trying to hear that. Micah Parsons is so great. They talk about Micah Parsons with T.J. Watt. Aaron Donald, Chris Jones. You know the difference between Micah Parsons and all of them? They all pushing 30 or at 30. Been in the league almost eight, nine years. Micah Parsons just ended his third year. The best young pass rusher in the NFL. All the players they compare Micah Parsons to been in the league almost a decade. Complete veterans. He doing this off pure talent. It's not even just, it's not wisdom yet. But now nah, he don't deserve to get paid. Now nah, we don't want to pay our generational pass rusher that they compare to Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Why, 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 why would we do that? Thank y'all for taking care of them cornballs, too. I see y'all. I see the cartel acting. Y'all active tonight. Appreciate y'all. Hurts is him. I've seen it. Yeah, him. Seen what? Seen what? Because we, we, we don't acknowledge getting pushed into the end zone by 14 players behind. I, I don't care. That ain't impressive. It ain't. You got to throw 30 touchdowns. This is a quarterback league. And it's, all them tush pushes ain't win you no championship. It just ain't. Just like all the stats ain't won Dak Prescott a championship. But that don't mean you shouldn't get paid. I ain't mad that Jalen Hurts got paid. I ain't mad that Justin Herbert got paid or Joe Burrow got paid or Kirk Cousins got paid. You know why? Because they're professional, great NFL quarterbacks. You deserve to get paid. It's just tiered. It is what it is. Stop whining. Whatever you do for a living, it's probably somebody out there better than you. Your boss don't come in there and be like, yo, you ain't top 10 in the league or in, 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 the, in the workforce, you don't deserve to get paid. You ain't the best person in IT. You ain't the best person to drive trucks. You ain't the best person behind the kitchen. So you don't deserve your money. It's silliness. It's the cost of doing business. You got an all-pro pass rusher, he gonna cost some money. You got an all-pro receiver that's 25 and younger, he going to cost some money. What? 
You got a top 10 quarterback that's an all pro, and I'm being generous saying top 10. He going to cost some money. It, it It's not free. And if you want to start over and run the risk, go out there and get you a Zach Wilson. And then go overpay for a veteran when it don't work. Go ahead. Because the Falcons was like, we done with Matt Ryan. We starting over. And the Colts was done with Peyton Manning. We starting over. It ain't that easy to find these quarterbacks. It ain't. You can get lucky like Houston, but that's rare. More often than not, you about to hold this, I don't know who going to be my quarterback, L. Because the Seahawks are ready to get rid of, rid of Russell Wilson, and they be looking at Geno Smith like, you know what I mean? We might replace you next year. Somebody just said Purdy. Yeah. I would look good as the 49ers quarterback. They got mad all pros. And I ain't saying Purdy not good. But he got a good supporting cast. Great supporting cast. That's not me hating on Purdy. That's just factual. I made all those points to say this, man. It's simple. We have too many good players on this team to just be idiotic enough to just say, I want to start over so I can try to go get more good players that are young. It's just it just does not make sense. And the chances that you're gonna hit on all of them is it's very, very possible you don't. Well, look, I don't know. I'm not Stephen Jones or Jerry Jones. I'm just a, a YouTuber, a content creator. What do I know? Right? Anyway, I'm just happy that Trayvon Diggs came out. Stood 10 toes down for one of his teammates. G checked that dude from the radio and said, listen, who said it? And probably said, keep our name out your mouth. See, he ain't tell you that part. Now, are they going to listen? Probably not. Because our flagship radio station loves to hate on its own players. That's what they do best. They say we we, we hold pom-poms and we just cheerleaders. Well, the people at 103.5, the fan, the, the thing they're best at is hating on their own, player, own players. They know how to talk trash about Dak Prescott. They sure how to know how to make C.D. Lamb not seem as good as he is. They know how to say Micah Parsons talk too much and he got a podcast. and You know, wearing thin. And if they didn't say it, they sure be happy to report it. It's a difference. You might not have created a report, but you sure was excited to get it off, wasn't you? You was excited to let everybody know that the that the people in the building are getting tired of Micah Parsons. You was you was hyped. Couldn't wait to say it. I don't know. They're getting tired of his act. What is his act? Young black rich man, really talented at what he does. You tired of that. All right. Okay. Let him walk. Let him walk. Trade him. And then look on and be like, wow, he really hitting this stride now. He not getting 13, 14 sacks. Now he getting 19 sacks. And the young pass rusher we drafted getting 11. I really wish we had one of those Micah. Par That's right, we did. But we traded him for two ones. Really wish I can get a receiver that get like 1,700 yards, 12 touchdowns, can run the ball, shifty, amazing after the catch, some of the best yak in the league. We used to have that, but we, we traded C.D. Lamb. Really wish we had a quarterback that can lead the league in touchdowns. Yep, really, really wish we had somebody that know how to play the game better than most quarterbacks in the league, but now we got Quincy Carter or Brandon Wheat. Yep, Vinny Testaverde, Drew Bledsoe. That's what we want. That's what we, that's what we trying to do. 
Come on, man. I'm I'm not like I'm just speaking truth. I'm not even. <laughs> like... Anyway, listen. I'm happy that our team, as far as our players and hopefully our coaches, is at least they know they all they got. They're gonna hold it down. This is one of the more positive things I've heard this year. I'm going to get back to my regularly scheduled program, which is Draft Talk. How many of y'all was in here rocking with me the other day when I was doing the draft show? Did y'all see my little draft, my little mock draft joint from the other day? Yes or no? I'm asking because I wanted to see if y'all wanted me to do another one. <laughs> do y'all want me to do another? Because I got an idea. I think I know what the Cowboys are going to do in the draft. I think I know the number one target. Um, obviously, this is all just a guess before somebody trying to come at me crazy. But I think I really do have an idea, and we could do a little. We could do a little mock draft talk, little little little, little chill, you know, kick back on Saturday night if y'all want to rock with me. Appreciate you. I'll probably do one. Y'all know I do Saturday Night Live with CFT, so we probably do that this Saturday. Um, unless something break and then I'll go live again. But this this story, I think, warranted me jumping in here and talking and just letting the people know that this is positive. Trayvon Diggs checking the radio station saying who said it, probably telling them to keep the, keep the team and the players' names out their mouth. And just this, this, this is a statement. I like that. I rock with it. Now, before y'all get up out of here, I appreciate y'all. Y'all got me at 304 likes. That's a that's mad love. Y'all been showing love all night. If you're not, hit the subscribe button. Y'all been showing me love with that. But I want y'all to do me one more favor before I get out of here. Because my brothers, I know they cooking right now. I know the final word is cooking right now. Um, am I going live draft day, Paul? I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know for sure yet. I might go live after the pick, but I don't know if I'm going live up to the pick. I don't, I'm I'm not draft guy, not yet. Y'all do me a favor. I need y'all to raid my boy Boss Cowboy Sports Channel. He the one that gave me the info. My brother Boss hit me up and let me know about Trayvon Diggs. Y'all head over there after I jump off. You know what I'm saying? Hit the like button when you walk in. Say this is CFT Raid. You know what I'm saying? Show him some love. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all. I just wanted to give y'all some positive, something to focus on besides all this negativity. We're going to get it together, man. It's been a long off season. Hopefully the draft can bring some positivity. Hopefully our, our, our front office wakes up and signs some cheap DTs or something like that. And we start building this team. You know what I'm saying? But until that time, we got each other. <laughs> Cartel, Cowboys Nation, we got each other. If nobody else rock with us, we rock with us. It's your boy, Mr. Rome, man. I'm going to slide up out of here. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I'll holler.